Okay, let's take a look at a few examples of how to solve equations that appear in quadratic form. Okay, so our first example, suppose we have x to the fourth plus x squared minus 1 equals 0. Now we've seen how to solve similar problems in the past where we have some sort of higher degree polynomial here. Here it's fourth degree uh, on one side and a 0 on the other side. Uh, we might try to factor this, factor it into uh, two polynomials being multiplied together of smaller degree and then one of those or both of them have to be zero and so we can reduce the complexity of our problem in that way but if we try to factor this let's say into the product of two binomials maybe x squared and x squared that seems very reasonable to get a one here we get a one there and a one there there's not much choice there uh, that negative tells us they have to be different signs one positive, one negative, but that's not going to pan out, is it? This inner product and that outer product uh, added together does not give me x squared. Okay, and we could try other different possibilities perhaps, maybe x here and x cubed there and so forth, but this does not break nicely into factors, at least not in any sort of obvious way. So what do we do? Well, notice how similar this looks to a quadratic. In so much as we have three terms, we have a constant term, we have something here, technically multiplied by 1, and then we have the square of that something here, again, technically multiplied by some constant of 1 there. So, in so much as if we let u, some new variable, be the something we saw that got squared, and we made replacements throughout this equation, turning all of our x's into u's, look what we get. Certainly we have a 0 on the end. The negative 1's not doing anything. x squared, that is u. And x to the fourth, that is u squared. Written in this way, it's very easy to see we have a quadratic. Okay, so when you can do that, when you can make a replacement, u equals some expression of x, and, uh, and rewrite this thing so that you end up with a quadratic, you have something in quadratic form. Now, once we have this equation written, we can certainly solve this for u, right? Uh, we try to factor. Of course, we essentially did that over here. It doesn't factor nicely. But what we can do always is use the quadratic formula, or complete the square for that matter. The quadratic formula is probably a little faster here. Okay, so u is going to be negative b, so that would be negative 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, or 1, minus 4ac. Of course, notice c is negative, so that becomes plus 4. All of that over 2a, or 2. And just putting that together, we have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. And that's completely simplified. We can't reduce the square root of 5 anymore. Uh, there's no common factors from uh, to the numerator and denominator that we can cancel. But we weren't interested in the solution to for u, we were interested in the solution for x in this equation. But notice, remember what u is, it's x squared. So I could rewrite this as x squared equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Okay, now if we can, we could solve this equation for x, and really we're solving two simultaneously because of the plus or minus. Of course to solve this you would just want to take the square root of both sides, plus or minus, which would give you x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2, but notice we do have to be a little bit careful here. If I take a square root of this expression if I'm using the negative 1 minus the square root of 5 possibility, that's going to result in a negative under the radical, which is not going to give me a real value. So if I'm interested only in the real solutions to this e equation, I'm going to have to remove that minus. Okay, The rest is okay. The square root of 5 is certainly bigger than 2, so when we add negative 1 to it, it's still positive. So there is our solution. A bit gross looking, but it's legitimate. Let's look at another example. How about 
Example 2 of x squared minus x, that quantity squared, minus 18 times x squared minus x. Hmm, that's the exact same expression that we saw over here. Plus 72 equals 0. Here again, noting that we have a constant term. We have something times some constant, and then we have that same something squared. Maybe we should make this something our u. So let u be x squared minus x. Then we can rewrite this as u squared minus 18u plus 72 equals 0. That's a quadratic in terms of u. So we know how to solve such things, right? We can try to factor it. Failing that, we could try the uh, quadratic formula. Let's see if it factors. Put a u there, put a u there to get a 72. Maybe a, uh, a 6 and a 12. There's other possibilities to worry about as well. But if we use a 6 and a 12, that would be a nice way to get 18 there. So maybe u minus 6 and u minus 12. Same signs to give us a positive 72. So then we have a product equaling 0. So one of those two factors must equal 0. So either u minus 6 equals 0 or u minus 12 equals 0. So u equals 6 or u equals 12. But remember, we're not solving for u. We're solving for x. But once we got it down to here, remember u is just x squared minus x. So this turns into x squared minus x equals 6. Or this one turns into x squared minus x equals 12. Both of these are solvable because both of these are in turn quadratics in terms of x. Okay, here again our, our uh, basic strategy for dealing with quadratics is to get everything to one side. So let's subtract the 6. Try to factor if we can. This gives us uh, x minus 3 times x plus 2 equals 0. And then one of those two factors has to be 0 if their product is 0. So this tells us either x is 3 to make that factor 0, or x is equal to negative 2 to make that factor equal to 0. But remember, that's just one option. That's when u equals 6. Over here, again, taking everything to one side, x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. And attempting to factor, that generally works out faster than the quadratic formula. Uh, we could see this breaks into x minus 4 and x plus 3. Here again, we have a product equaling 0, so one of those two factors has to be 0. If the first one is equal to 0, then x is going to be 4. If the second one is equal to 0, then x had better be negative 3. So we have all four possibilities here. So x equals uh, negative 3 from here, or negative 2, or 3, or 4, just to put them in order. And that's it. Okay, so that's another example of something in quadratic form. Again, you're looking for a constant, perhaps a constant times something, and then the same something showing up here squared, maybe times an additional constant, equaling zero. Okay, that's your quadratic form. Let's look at another one. Example three. X to the two thirds minus 9x to the 1 third plus 8 is equal to 0. Okay, so here again, notice we have a constant. We have a constant times something, this x to the 1 third. If we square that something, we'd get x to the 2 thirds, right? And that's exactly what we see here. Even if we had another constant multiplier out here, that would be okay. This is going to be in quadratic form. And the something that we squared, that's our good choice for u. So if I rewrite this, this, remember, is just u squared minus 9 times u 
and then plus a constant 8 equals 0. There's our quadratic in terms of u. Okay, so we try to solve this in the normal way. Try to factor it first, perhaps. If you can't, you can always use the quadratic formula. This one factors nicely. The u minus 8 and u minus 1, which tells you u is either 8 or 1, right? One of those two things had better be 0 if their product is 0. But we're not after u, we're after x. Remember, u is x to the 1 third. So we know x to the 1 third equals 8 or x to the 1 third equals 1. Okay, solving both of these is straightforward. There's only one thing happening to x. Namely, we're taking a third root. So if we cube both sides, we'll get 8 cubed or 1. If you want, 8 cubed is 512, if you want to expand that out. And so those are our two possibilities, as x is either 1 or 512. Okay? So yet another example of an equation in quadratic form. Again, you're looking for a constant, maybe a constant times something, and then a constant times that's the square of that something. Set u to be that something, solve the related quadratic, replace you with this, and solve whatever you have left to go. That's it. That's how you deal with quadratic form.